Okay, first uh, let's recall that the magnetic field at a distance r from a long straight uh, a current running along a long straight conductor is 2k prime i over r. Okay, there's your magnetic field. Now, uh, we assume a loop at a magnetic field, uh, uh, sorry, a current running into the board. So we have a loop of radius A with the current running into the board, and we're asked uh, what's the integral of the magnetic field around this loop, loop having radius A. Uh, we can easily uh, make the argument uh, that we don't really need to do an integration to find this. Um, if we have a delta S increment here, and uh, that was uh, kind of poorly written. I crowded it with what we have up here. I should have done it elsewhere. But as I say, I'm not batting 100,000 percent today. Well, let's just say, okay, here's our delta S. Uh, it, the back delta S vector is here parallel uh, or tangent to this loop at some point. The magnetic field, uh, if the current is in to the board, uh, then thumb in the direction of the current right hand tells us the magnetic field is surrounding the wire in this direction. Um, so we have the magnetic field here. The magnetic field is in the same direction as delta S. Now, uh, when I say the same direction, it's, it's along the same line as delta S. It would actually be uh, in the opposite direction here. So the dot product of V with delta S is going to be negative, uh, the product of magnitude of V times magnitude of delta S. Uh, but that's not particularly important for what we're talking about right here. <coughs> okay. Um, So this integral is going to have, at every, for every segment, it's going to have magnitude of B delta S. So that, as in the example we did before, where we calculated uh, the magnitude of the field at the central point, uh, we can simply add up all the B delta S contributions around the circle. And that's going to give us a result of magnitude b times 2 pi a. Now, the um, question is, in what direction do we integrate? Well, we integrate in the counterclockwise direction. Um, and then uh, the b in this case um, would be negative because the current is going in the negative direction relative to the loop. Okay. So we would have a negative here, and I don't want to get into the details of that. I'll take care of that later. Uh, you want to be careful about those things, but let's just get the concept here. So uh, the magnitude of the B delta S, and I should probably go ahead to uh, make this correct. The same the magnitude of B delta S is B times 2 pi A. The magnetic field here is 2K prime I over R. Uh, so R, in this case, equals A, the R being the distance from the field to the point at which we, from the current to the uh, point at which we calculate the field. And uh, we get this expression very clearly. We get the 2 pi A times the field 2K prime I divided by A. Again, the negative is taken care of by the sign of the current. Um, And, and we end up then. Uh, just multiply this up, 4k prime i. Uh, and that's equal to mu naught i, since mu naught is equal to 4 pi k prime. OK, so that's going to be the result. Now, in general, the integral of magnetic field dot ds is 4 pi k prime times the enclosed current, the current enclosed inside the loop. Okay, C is the boundary of the loop, and uh, I enclosed is all the current that, that passes through the region bounded 
by that boundary. Now, you know from multivariable calculus that uh, this could be any region. Um, that this is related to the integral theorems, uh, or specifically in this case, the Stokes theorem. And we'll draw those connections later. But uh, that's how we prove that this works not just for the current in the center of the loop, in other words, a loop that surrounds the, uh, the conductor uh, at constant distance, but any old loop that we want to make around this conductor. Okay? Uh, and any old loop uh, is going to include uh, all the currents that pass through. And we're going to see how that works out here in just a minute. Okay, so anyhow, we have this general conclusion that the line integral of B dot DS around any closed curve that bounds the surface is going to be this. Okay, generalizes this result. And again, those results are generalized using the integral theorems of multivariable calculus. And I'll just add, this is called Ampere's Law. I never referred to it by name in the discussion, but that's uh, what we call it. This is Ampere's Law. Now we're going to apply Ampere's Law uh, to a situation that I've sketched here. We'll do that in the next clip.